Here are my top 10 muscle knot releases. Trigger points in the plantar fascia will often present right underneath my fingertip. So what I like to do here is I will flex the toes and the foot, and then with my opposite hand, I'm compressing at the heel, and this helps to slacken all of the tissue underneath my fingertip. Hold this for 90 seconds and wait for release. If you don't get a release, you can slacken the tissue even more by doing a little bit more flexion and internal rotation. The Achilles tendon can also play a role in foot pain. I'm supporting the foot with my leg, and then I'm pressing down on the tendon or a trigger point around the tendon, and then I will compress once again at the heel, and this helps to slacken the tendon and all the tissue around it. Hold this for 90 seconds, wait for the release, and maintain the compression at the heel. The calves have the gastrocnemius heads. In between those two heads, you can reach in and get to the soleus. So I'm going quite deep with my fingertips here, and then I'm supporting the foot at my shoulder, and I'm doing a little bit of flexion at the toes and with the foot. As I do that, I'm going to compress the heel downward towards the area where I'm pressing down with my hand. To increase the effectiveness of this technique, you can even flex the leg to slacken the tissue even more around the trigger point. Sciatic pain can oftentimes be related to the piriformis, and I think that this is the best technique to release the piriformis. So in between the sacrum and the greater trochanter, you're gonna find the piriformis muscle. And as you locate it, you're going to support the leg with your leg. And then you're gonna reach around and grab the knee just above it. And what you can do here is you can also bring the lower leg in a little bit closer. And then you could take your hand just above the knee and bring that up to relax all the tissue around the piriformis muscle. And then you're gonna press down on the piriformis muscle, find the trigger point and wait for the release. I've talked about vertigo before with the SAM muscle. This is a really nice release. So I'm placing my arm underneath her head and then I'm gonna bring her into a little bit of flexion and also a little bit of rotation. And that helps to relax the SEM muscle. Place your fingertips on the trigger point. And then you could also use your body here to make the client feel more secure and to make sure that the muscle is getting slackened as much as possible to release those vertigo symptoms. I like this one a lot. So I'll place a pillow underneath her shoulder on one side of her body. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm looking at the erector muscles, specifically in this one at the lumbar erectors. I'll place my fingertips along the erectors and find where there's a trigger point or a tender point, communicate with the client. I'll place my fingertips down. And with this one, I also like to work with the breath. I'll hold it for 90 seconds. And this is really great at relaxing the lower back. The tailbone is often ignored, and I find a lot of times that this can relate to pelvic pain if there is some stuckness in that joint at the end of the spine. What I like to do here is I will press down on the coccyx with my thumb, and then with my opposite hand, I'm going to compress the sacrum. That helps to slacken all the tissue around the coccyx and also helps to relax the end of the spine by just compressing that area. Hold it for 90 seconds and wait for the relaxation. Here's a nice one for a very common problem for people, and that's a trigger point in the upper traps. I'll hold there, and then I'll bring the arm up to about 90 degrees. And then what I'm doing here is I'm gonna do a little bit of external rotation with her arm, and that helps to relax the tissue in the upper traps. And then you could also bring the head over, which relaxes the tissue even more, and this is gonna get your trigger point release as fast as possible. Chest pain and pec pain is something that is quite common in athletes, and we all have rounded forward shoulders, so this is a great technique where you're gonna find a lot of trigger points. I'll locate where the trigger point is, press down, bring the arm across the body, and that will help to slacken the tissue in the pecs, and this will help to relax any trigger point or any type of chest pain. And sometimes, due to stress, there's a lot of guarding in this area, and this will help with that as well. Finally, pain in the hand is something that's more common than you think. 
And this is a great one for the thumb. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the tissue around the thumb and I'm compressing it and I'm allowing it to relax underneath my fingertips. You don't wanna do this too hard. You wanna be just gentle with it and look for the direction of ease and you'll find where the tissue is easing off underneath your fingertips and hold for 90 seconds. The supraspinatus muscle will oftentimes have trigger points. So what you're gonna do here is you're gonna locate the spine of the, so Kate, I'll just get you to bring your head like this for a bit. So you're gonna locate the spine of the scapula and once you find a tender point there, you're going to bring the arm up into 120 degrees, which is usually where the supraspinatus is most relaxed. And then you're also gonna do a little bit of external rotation. And then you're also gonna kind of compress the shoulder inward towards my fingertips to relax the muscle. You can even provide a bit of compression at the elbow to get this area to shorten and soften. Another way you can do this too, you guys won't be able to see, but is to get the client to bring their head into lateral flexion and rotation. And in this positioning, you're definitely gonna soften up that supraspinatus tender point. For the infraspinatus, we're basically going to do the same thing, but instead of locating the spine of the scapula, you're going to go basically on the scapula. So you're going to find the spine and then roll down off into the infraspinatus on the scapula. And then once again, bring the arm up. And then with this one, you're also going to bring them into external rotation. And you're going to do a little bit of a compression, bringing the arm this way. So I'm compressing her elbow and that's shortening the tissue along the scapula. And that's helping to relax all that tissue there. And this is a great way to relieve the infraspinatus. For the teres minor, you're gonna follow the scapula right into this lateral portion right here. And then you're gonna place your fingertips, find that tender point in there. There usually will be one in this area. And I'm placing my fingertips there. And then what I'm gonna do is place her arm on my leg. And then I'm also gonna do a little bit of external rotation. And then as I do that, I can lift my leg up to do that. And then I can also do a little bit of compression once again at the elbow to relax the teres minor. So like I said, place your leg underneath the arm, raise it up. You can do a little bit of external rotation by bringing the arm down like this. And as you do, do that, you can also compress the elbow in, and that helps to shorten all the tissue around the teres minor.